Hi guys, hope you guys are all doing well. Um, today we're going to go over preliminary crimes, also called inchoate crimes. And these are crimes that um, you start to commit a crime and you don't necessarily end up committing the target crime. Or sometimes you do commit the target crime and we'll see what's called merger. Um, but this is when you have criminal action that takes place before the target crime is actually committed. And the target crime is essentially the ultimate crime that you are trying to commit. So what we're going to look at today are things like solicitation, conspiracy, attempt, all those things that you can have leading up to the actual crime that you intended all along to commit. Um, some of these preliminary actions are considered crimes in and of themselves, and you may be surprised at how some of these end up going down. Um, and we do require proof of intent. So if you'll recall, in one of the last um, slides that we went over, we talked about how you have to have intent, you have to have a guilty state of mind. Um, the example I gave you was the girl that burns down her house. If it's an accident because she left her curling iron on, then we don't have intent. If she did it on purpose because she wants to turn it in for um, the insurance money, then we do have arson. All right. So in these cases, guys, what we see are certain actions that maybe don't even result in the target crime being committed, um, but we're still going to see them being punished. And I put on here, what are some inchoate crimes? Um, to sort of get you thinking about it if we had been in class face to face we'd have a little bit of a discussion here um but unfortunately we are not so you'll just have to listen to me okay guys the first one we're going to talk about here is solicitation and solicitation has a couple of different meanings um some of you might have signs on your front door that say no solicitation some of you may have been to a shopping center one of my friends is a property manager down at the South Park shops and there are signs everywhere that say no solicitation. She put them there because they don't want you standing there selling things or handing out flyers if you don't have permission from um, the, the owner of the South Park shops to do so. All right. When we're looking at solicitation in the legal sense, it is a little bit different. So here's the definition of it, guys. Solicitation is the act of requesting or strongly urging someone to do something that is illegal. The person being solicited does not have to actually commit the crime. So in order to have the crime of solicitation, all you need is for someone to ask you or strongly urge you to do something that is illegal. Now, I don't mean like as a joke. Um, I know some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, I've, you know, I've texted my friends before and said things as a joke, like, oh, we should, we should break into Hulse's room and steal the answer key for the law test. Ha ha. That's not solicitation, all right? What we're looking for is, did you actually intend to go through with the crime or for the person that you're soliciting to go through with the crime? So again, we have to look at what your intent here is. Okay, so here's our example. Joe asked Christian if he'll help him steal Casey's car. Christian says no. At that point, guys, we have a crime. We have the crime of solicitation. Um, even if Joe is like, eh, that's all right, I wasn't going to steal the car anyway, or well, I'm not going to steal it if I don't have any help, right? Even if nothing else comes of this situation, we now have the crime of solicitation. So just asking someone if they would like to help you with a crime, if they would commit a crime, urging someone, hey, you know what you should do? You should go steal Joe's car since yours isn't working very well. Guys, that's solicitation, even if nothing else happens after that. And that's the one a lot of students are surprised about. All right, the next one, guys, is attempt. Attempt is one that we see a lot. Um, this is when you have an effort to commit a crime that goes beyond mere preparation. So it has to be more than just preparing for the crime, but we don't actually have commission of the crime. So here are the elements. And if we were in school, I'd have you write these down. Um, <laughs> this is that checklist that I told you guys you would have in determining whether or not a crime has been committed, All right? In order to be guilty, we must have the intent to commit a crime and a substantial step towards committing the crime. So it's not just like you sat in your room and you thought about committing a crime. We have to see some substantial step towards committing that crime, okay? Josh attempts to shoot and kill Cole, but he only wounds him. This is attempted murder, okay? He intended to kill him, and he took a substantial step towards killing him. And that step, in this case, is pretty clear. Aiming the gun at him and shooting. 
okay? So even if he only injures him, even if it's not even a big deal, even if he misses him entirely, um, that's still going to count as attempt, all right? Mitch intends to kill Sarah. He goes to the store and buys a gun, but he's arrested on his way to her house. Again, we're probably going to see this charge as attempted murder because the substantial step here was driving to her house, all right? So even though he was thwarted by the police, um, that could still constitute an attempt. Guys, impossibility is not a defense to attempt in Pennsylvania. And I, I'll go over Pennsylvania law with you guys. I'm not going to go over the law of all 50 states, um, partially because I don't know the law of all 50 states, and also because that's a lot to wrap your mind around. But in Pennsylvania, the fact that the crime would have been impossible, okay, um, that does not count as a defense. So Julia buys a gun. She goes to Amber's house, aims the gun at her, pulls the trigger. Okay, this was a defective gun. There's no way this gun was going to fire. Um, even though it's impossible to kill her with this gun, she is still going to be guilty of attempt. All right, and then there's sort of the classic law school example. Um, you have the one spouse uh, gets fed up with their other spouse. Say we have a wife that gets fed up with her husband and the hu she thinks the husband is... Um, you know, she wants the husband to die, so she slowly poisons his dinner every night. She puts a little tiny bit in his dinner every night, hoping that eventually over time the poison will kill him. But it turns out what she's been putting in his dinner is not poison, but a harmless substance. That would still constitute attempt, even though it would be impossible to kill him with whatever the substance she was using was because she intended to kill him, because she thought it was poison and she could kill him with it that's still going to count as attempted murder. In Pennsylvania, you can have an offense that is called renunciation. This is also called withdrawal. Renunciation is the fancy legal term for it, and withdrawal is just what happens. You withdraw from the crime. And the elements of that, if you want to prove that you withdrew from the crime, so let's say the prosecution proves their case, they have their check marks, okay? And then the defense attorney would say, wait a minute, we have a defense. We go through and see if we can prove it. Voluntary and complete renunciation, abandonment of the criminal effort, and it cannot be motivated by the difficulty of the crime or the chances of being caught. So in other words, if you are going to rob a bank and you pull up in front of the bank and you realize they have a police officer there, and it's going to make your bank robbery a lot more difficult than you initially thought, so you keep on driving. Technically, guys, that is not a withdrawal, and this is counterintuitive to what a lot of students think is a withdrawal. Um, <coughs> excuse me. If you guys get this one mixed up, um, don't feel too bad, because a lot of law students get this mixed up as well. Uh, so sometimes, um, I think I mentioned to you guys, maybe not, but I grade essays for students over the summer who are studying to take the bar exam. And I've been doing this for about 12 years now. So I start to see the same essays over and over again. And one of the fact patterns that they assign to the students every year deals with um, two, two people, boyfriend and girlfriend, John and Crystal are their names. And John and Crystal decide that they're going to rob a store. And when they go into the store, um, Crystal backs out at the last second. So they go in the store. Crystal says to John, yeah, I can't do this. And she bolts. All right. John looks around and thinks, well, if she's not doing it, I'm not doing it um, because it's going to be a lot harder now that it's just me robbing the store instead of the two of us. So he also leaves. All right. And one of the questions on the bar exam or on one of the old bar exams that students now use for practice is, did this constitute an attempt? And I would say, guys, probably two thirds of the students get it wrong and they put, no, it's not an attempt. Um, he withdrew from the situation because to the lay person or to a person that doesn't know the elements well, it does look like he withdrew. But the reality of it is, guys, he did not withdraw. Um, he was motivated to abandon the crime because all of a sudden it got more difficult to commit the crime. It was just him instead of him and Crystal. So technically, if John gets charged with attempt, he is going to be found guilty, um, which I always get the question every single semester, and some of you might be thinking, well, how are they ever going to know? 
And again, they probably won't. I'm sure there are a lot of people committing crimes, especially attempts every single day that never get caught, that we never know about, because you basically would have to read their mind to know that he was in the store with the intent to rob it and then left because his girlfriend left. Um, what we're talking about here now, guys, is in theory. In theory, he would be guilty of attempt. Okay. Um, here is a case where withdrawal is a defense. Cole plans to rob a bank. He buys a ski mask, picks out a bank to rob. Um, he goes to the bank in his getaway car and then realizes, like, oh, hey, I'm a terrible person for trying to do this. So he leaves. In this case, he's not guilty of attempt. Change the situation up a little bit. He pulls up in front of the bank and instead of thinking, oh, hey, I'm a terrible person. I shouldn't do this. He says, oh, hey, there's a police officer standing there. Maybe I'm going to get caught. So he leaves. In that case, he's guilty of attempt. Again, practically speaking, how would we know? It would be very difficult unless we had other evidence, unless he had talked about it with people ahead of time, things like that. Um, but what we're talking about here, guys, is in theory. In theory, that's what would happen. We don't see a lot of people charged with attempt because it, attempt because it merges with the target crime. Technically, every single crime... Well, I shouldn't say every single. I should know better than to say every single. Technically, most crimes have a point where if we froze time, that would be an attempt. All right. If party A walks up to party B and points a gun at them, all right, right at that second, if time froze, you could say that's attempted murder. Um, they took a substantial step towards murdering the person. All right. Unfreeze time. They pull the trigger and kill the person. We're not going to charge that person with attempted murder and murder, all right? If the person who attempts to commit the crime actually commits the crime, then what we're going to do is we're going to merge those two together, and they're only going to be charged with the target crime, which is more serious, okay? So if we have the, the situation where Julia tries to fire the gun, um, it's defective, it doesn't fire. However, for some reason, the second time it does fire. They're not going to say, well, you attempted to murder her, and then three seconds later, you did murder her, all right? They're going to say, well, that's murder. They're not going to charge her with both. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop here because it only lets me go for 15 minutes, and I don't want to get cut off in the middle of conspiracy. So I'm going to put conspiracy on a different video for you guys. All right, as always, if you have questions or comments, um, just put a comment below the video and please make it public so your classmates can see it if they also have the same question. All right, guys, see you later.